Greetings fellow explorers. This is Tony with Found Systems Network and we are here in pursuit of low carbon innovations for industrial wastewater treatment. This is our second episode featuring Raja Shazrin Shah. In this episode, he describes a past project that he worked on in Kelantan in Northern Malaysia, where he and a few fellow researchers worked on treating wastewater from cottage scale batik dyeing workshops. Now, if you didn't see the prior episode featuring Mr. Shah's original PhD research into wastewater from palm oil manufacturing, I'm gonna post a link to it here. You may not already be familiar with batik. It is a traditional method for dyeing silk cloth. The designs and colors are brilliant and batik is one of the great national crafts of Malaysia. The batik dyeing shops that Mr. Shah worked on tend to be small scale and family owned and over the years, the wastewater from the process has started to present risks to surface water and groundwater quality in their immediate vicinity. Here, we learn about attempts that were made in the last few years to mitigate the contaminants in the wastewater from these shops. Before we get started, if you like what you see here on the Found Systems Network, do like and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. Do you want to talk about the uh, batik dyeing shops in Kalantan? Okay, so we were trying to promote uh, cleaner production, the adoption of cleaner production in uh, batik workshops. The water source in Kelantan has, uh, they, they are starting to realize that there are heavy metals in their water, but I think they are realizing it now, you know, whatever you are pouring on the ground will mm. turn up in your well. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. So yeah, I, I have not heard people, you know, stories about people getting sick or, or, or or mutation happening in the family or, or anything of and uh, pe pe people are starting to realize that you know this this can have long-term adverse effects on on their health and things like that okay yeah. so okay. that that's the driving force now we worked with the department of environment and with uh, craft and uh, we we went to uh, a couple of families and we we chose uh, there was there was a time where we we had a, a, a seminar kind of set up where you know we had a few hundred people coming on. Oh my! And, okay. Hmm, and and we did select uh, two two sites. I believe it was two sites to be oh. like a demonstration site. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we helped them, and I think it the, the the all the efforts and all the upgrades were were, were funded. From what I know is uh, batik uh, workshops normally are family-run business and uh, they are somewhat becoming a, a, a heritage kind of business where sure. the, you know, uh, it's being passed down uh, from families mm -hmm. and uh, there, there, are, there are several, I, I, do I use the word technology? Uh, where it's it's mostly uh, focused in in like in, in Peninsula Malaysia, it's mostly focused in in the uh, states of Kelantan and Terengganu, mm -hmm. and uh, they, normally they, they, there's there's two ways of of uh, making batik. Where uh, one way is 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 using uh, stencils, where they 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 pre they prefabricate the stencils and mm -hmm. they they stamp the patterns onto the textile. And they are, there's another form of batik where uh, they, they draw freehand mm -hmm. and uh, they use the word chanting. So mm -hmm. they chant the, the, the floral patterns or, or what kind of patterns, any kind of patterns on, on, onto the textile. And uh, this is where uh, the, the batik is, is, is unique, where you know some, some, some kind of, uh, some of the styles and patterns and and you know, uh, it's like an artwork. So so different different families will have different kind of styles, and uh, so the the drawing part or, or the stamping part, uh, there, there's two 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 portions of it. So one will be done from the wax, and then uh, uh, which sometimes is being used as as, as outline. And uh, the other part is, is actually the coloring in. So they will use uh, dyes uh, to color in the batik. Then uh, after that, it's allowed to dry. Then they go for the fixation, which uh, can involve silicates and things like that. It's actually literally being boiled in big pots. <laughs> so uh, they use a lot of water because it's a lot of 
dipping and rinsing and boiling and rinsing, then drying, then rinsing again. So uh, all this wastewater, you know, the, the part that, that boils the batik, that, 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 that process is intended to remove the uh, wax, which they have used right. to outline as outlines. Uh, so that, that wastewater will have wax in it. And the fixing part, it will have silicates in it. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they use sodium silicate, I think, as a fixer. Then, uh, of course, even the other parts, they will have, all the parts will have dyes mm -hmm. or colors. It, it will come up like a blue, gray, black kind of color. I'm imagining just big cooking pots over a, gla a gas burner. I mean, it's not even industrial equipment, is it? It's more like people cooking large vats of soup in their backyard, like on that scale? Yeah, you, you will find those big, uh, uh, they look like woks, yeah. big woks. And, and some of them even do the cooking in, in like uh, 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 those, those barrels that are being cut. Right. Yeah, they will cut the barrel and, and, and use that for cooking. Okay. So yeah, that happens as well. They allow it to cool off. Then right. uh, they, they will try to take uh, the, the wax, those that, that, that uh, solidifies on, on the top on the top surface of, of the effluent and then they just tip over whatever is, whatever is left. Uh, oxidation process, the, the Fenton oxidation process, they, they were looking at it. So uh, that's a peroxidation process. And they were also looking at uh, using uh, activated carbon. But uh, all the, these processes, activated carbon is sensitive to wax and, and silicates. This, this poisons the 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 the, the active sites, mm -hmm. yeah, it poisons the medium, and the the peroxidation is not simple because you require some pH adjustments and things like that. So it, it requires a level of skill, and uh, when this happens, uh, it, 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 it will just work for a while. Then uh, if, if there are any changes, that it does, it doesn't work anymore. The, the treatment system was was designed that the the prototype was built and it was working, but uh, the complications of, of, of working, it, it wasn't simple enough for people. For the families, the, the treatment yeah. system was in the family's backyard and everyone was asking them to do their own treatment. Correct. And, and you know, uh, the, the ones that they tried, it, 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 needed, it needed a level of understanding. It, they... it, we have a real value proposition there. And that's, that's, that's this whole kind of pursuit with, with what I'm doing is it's not just educating myself about the markets, but, but finding a value proposition, meaning how, how do we make someone's business easier? How do we make someone's life better? How, how do we help, help someone else make more money? How do you, how do you create a service that is of value? And, and I'm seeing a value proposition there. And so it is the kind of thing um, that, uh, you know, if we get a little more traction, uh, as far as engagement with the with the clients, um, engagement with local expertise, local organization, like maybe it's Croft. There's a real value proposition that I can write grant funding for and around, you know, and we can I can build an actual team that would be fundable. I, I mean, I feel very strongly about that, actually. So all right, take care. I'll see you. OK, take care. Right. Okay. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Super interesting and really relevant to our found systems pursuit also. Now, if you've been following the channel for some time, you would have already seen in a past episode our found module and found systems array. In that iteration of the concept, we were looking at using our proprietary separation technology for recirculating aquaculture systems. Now, we didn't win the 2021 solar desalination prize for that concept, but we're not giving up and we're going to continue doing market research to see if there are applications for it. Now here, Mr. Shaw and I think that it may have an application for this niche market. I'll be sure to produce more episodes along this theme as this pathway develops. So that's it, everyone. What do you think? Is there some obvious solution to treating the wastewater from batik dyeing that we're missing? What would the financial mechanisms be for bringing about a reduction of the risks of the contaminants from the wastewater? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you like what you see here on the Found Systems Network, please like and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter. And remember everyone, keep exploring, keep growing. I'll see you next time.